If you're installing a GFCI outlet, a dimmer switch, a controller for a heated floor, a smart home light switch, or other electrical device, you may have been confused when the instructions ask you to identify the line and load wires. Don't worry, we've all been confused by this the first or second or even third time we read it. Here's an easy way to remember what each of these terms mean. The word line has the word in in it. That's an easy way to remember that line refers to the wire that brings power in to the device. The word load has an O in it, which stands for out. This makes it easier to remember that the load wire takes power out of the device. So now that we've got that down, let's look at some examples of how you apply this knowledge when installing some common devices. We will start with a dimmer switch or smart home light switch. The switch controls whether a light goes on or not. Now in this example, the line wire coming out of the back of the switch is the black wire, and the load wire is the red wire. I focused on just these two wires in this illustration. The line wire on the switch is connected to the black wire bringing power into the box. The load wire on the switch is connected to the black wire taking the power out to the light. For floor radiant heat controllers and similar devices, you'll see more complex wiring diagrams. You may see them marked on the device for wiring using a diagram similar to this one. The sine wave symbol indicates the power source or line. This indicates that both the hot and neutral wires for the line and the load need to be connected to the controller wires. On the device, you'll see wires coming out arranged similar to the diagram. Connect the black and white line wires coming out of the controller to the black and white wires bringing power into the box from the panel, the line wire coming into the box. Connect the black and white load wires coming out of the controller to the black and white wires going to the device. Pay attention when wiring these devices. I've messed this up more than once. Next, let's discuss a GFCI outlet because it's a little different case. Often when you take it out of the package, it has yellow tape over the load terminals, and the instructions caution you to fully understand when you should connect wires to these load terminals. Option one is when you want to just protect this outlet with ground fault protection, and other outlets or switches further along the circuit will not turn off if this GFCI outlet shuts off due to a ground fault. Connect the black and white wires coming from the panel to the line terminals. Then connect the black and white wires going to the rest of the outlets and switches to the same line terminals as well. GFCI outlets usually have back wiring so that both sets of wires can be properly connected. Keep the load terminals covered. Option two is when you want outlets or switches further along the circuit to turn off if this outlet detects a ground fault. Remove the covering from the load terminals. Connect the black and white wires coming from the panel to the line terminals. Then connect the black and white wires going to the rest of the outlets and switches to the load terminals. If you remember, line has the word in in it, meaning that that cable is bringing power into the device. Then you'll know that the load cable takes power out of the device. You can be confident when wiring any device that needs you to identify the line and load wires. Are there other questions about common electrical terms or techniques you'd like me to answer? If so, share your thoughts in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, please click the like button so more homeowners like yourself will find this video. Subscribe to the channel to get notified of future videos. Thanks for watching.